Well, come on in, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Living the Astrology, where I keep it very real. And I talk about what it was like living through certain major transits in my life. In this case, we're talking about Saturn transiting my 10th house. And uh, so there's a lot of a lot of videos on this available. If you just want textbook rendition of it, you can totally do that. I felt led to do something more vulnerable, more authentic, more where I'm giving personal sharing. So uh, for that reason, I will not be doing the whole series because right, Saturn takes like 29 years to get through, you know, all the houses. So um, thank God it'll be another 29 years from now before I go through this again. So <laughs> I will, however, talk about uh, the first one I went through because this is going to be my second one. And we're going to contrast the difference between, you know, me going through this age of seven, through uh, 19 years old versus in my 40s very different and will hopefully drive the point home to you that you have to keep in mind your own unique astrology because I will be bringing up other things other astrological transits that were going on in my life at different stages ages stages in my life and hopefully it will illustrate you know that you have to look at the nuances that are made with other energies at the time of the transit that is impacting you and so let's get into it uh the saturn transit for me going through my 10th house happened december of 2021 and i just got out of it march 15th um 2024 and it is solidly now in my 11th house i will talk a little bit more about the 11th house toward the end just to give you a taste of what's to come but of course i won't fully talk about that 11th house transit until i get out of it another two and a half years from now okay um 10th house is a lot about status it's a lot about your public life your career your legacy uh, family wealth that has a lot to do with your ambitions having achievement in your life the authority the role of authority in your life um, your public image social power getting recognition having wealth building wealth okay so uh, we're going to be hitting on a lot of those themes throughout this entire video and i have to give you some disclaimers as well you know like i said before you're going to have your own unique transit hopefully it will not be as rough as mine because why was mine so doggone rough well i am a 10th houser look at where your 10th look at what's going on in your 10th house okay is your son in the 10th house like mine if not then probably 10th house issues are not so important for you like you might not feel such a drive in your life to like a, a motivation to be successful okay like achievement and accomplishment and it, it may not factor so high up on your value system as it does for me and i didn't entirely realize how important it is to me until this transit and you know saturn's going over my sun which the sun is the core of who you are like i had no idea like how central this is to my being like to not anyway <laughs> and then i also had black moon lilith uh in my natal chart in the 10th house zero degree which is super potent okay um some say that's like a a double portion of um of energy when you're at a a zero degree so um you know very very critical double potency and um also zero can bring up inexperience so in a, in a house where you need to, you know, be experienced and have maturity and longevity and, you know, all of this crap. Um, and you need to persevere, you know, 10th house. Um, it's at zero degree where, wait, I don't, I don't really have experience with uh, this Black Moon Lilith coming up. And, and Black Moon Lilith is my own shadow. The, the, the inner demons that I'm dealing with. And um, for me, it comes up in this house where just not to get off onto that, but to let you know someone with that placement um, again it's just another layer of, of showing that this is an individual who really ranks achievement very high in their value system it's very important uh, but it's also indicative of someone who not only strives for um, improved status um, accomplishment but will constantly find that it evades them and i'm going to talk more about this later but i bring it up briefly here to say um 
again, just keep in mind the uniqueness of everybody's natal charts that for me, it may sound like, well, why is that such a big deal to you? Well, try having your sun and your black moon Lilith in this 10th house, not a picnic people. I also have Mercury there and Pallas in my 10th house as well. But with Saturn going through this 10th house, um, definitely felt that I was being, um, you know, my, my own vitality, my own life force, uh, my value systems were being kind of choked out of me and without, sorry if, if I sound dramatic, but you know, Saturn is a, a, a limiting, restricting, reducing, heavy energy. And yeah, even though I have gone through this transit before, um, I had other energies during that time were, which were a lot more positive, uh, which I'll share with you later, but just suffice it to say, you know, um, this second transit was a lot harder on me than what I recall the first time around. I don't recall feeling so unseen, so irrelevant, uh, so worthless and useless. Um, I'm just keeping it very real with y'all. And if y'all can't handle this level of personal sharing, this is not your video. And I think these issues were especially painful for me because I was also going through uh, my Chiron return, which we usually all experience usually around the age of 52. But for me, it came in a little bit early age uh, 48, 49. Okay. And that was triggering a lot of self-worth issues collectively. We're dealing with this right now. Um, but if you're a Gen X baby born in like 1969 through 1976 or seven ish, then you know you you have you were born during Chiron and Aries. You have been carrying these soul wounds of self worth issues your entire life, as have I. So that was definitely getting triggered during this time. Wasn't happening the first time I was going through that Saturn uh, transit in the tenth house. Probably why it didn't hurt so bad. Uh, but yeah, it definitely brought up these feelings of I'm not being valued. And I started realizing like I never saw myself as somebody who was like an attention seeker. Um, I had people accuse me of that or being pretentious. I had people accuse me of that or that I was snooty or um, intimidating. I had people tell me things like that before. Uh, and I never really saw myself in that way. Uh, but whenever this transit came through the second time, as Chiron was going, uh, as Chiron was returning in my chart to my natal Aries placement, I definitely felt the pain of uh, I'm not being recognized or valued for my contribution and the, how that made me feel and realizing how important it is to me. So also when we're talking about Saturn, realize we're looking at karma getting triggered. And so look at your natal chart. Where is Saturn and Capricorn showing up in your natal chart? So for me, it's showing up in the second and uh, eighth houses, these money houses, right? I've got a natal Saturn in the second house, opposing Capricorn in the eighth house, malefics, right? And an opposition. Uh, this is, I've had several people tell me this is probably the hardest aspect you can have in your natal chart where, you know, it's just basically brought a lifetime battle over resources. And so whenever Saturn goes into the 10th house, a very Saturnian Capricornian house, my malefics in my natal chart involving Saturn and Capricorn opposing each other are just like, it, it, it's like an explosion. Okay. And so I've talked a little bit about these money houses in my other videos that I put out in this series. I don't want to go too much into it just to say that um, it's um, battling, battling over resources your entire life. Um, you, you know, you, 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 it's like you are born to a father who doesn't pay his child support. And then you end up marrying and having three kids with a guy who doesn't pay for his child support. And you're a woman trying to make it in a man's world with men who, you know, no support, right? And so again, that's how it shows up with the money stuff, but it's also that opposition is like instant karma where you get the book thrown at you, right? Like Saturn, 10th house, Capricorn, we're talking about the taskmaster, we're talking about the disciplinarian where, and karma where you better walk that line. And again, 
you know, hopefully you don't have these malefics and this ridiculous opposition where you're dealing with this shit getting triggered, okay? But do pay attention to what's getting triggered here. I don't want to scare y'all. Weigh everything out. Um, hopefully, again, what's getting triggered in, with your Saturn and Capricorn placements is not that heavy. Um, and also, let me just side note, add that I have had to consider most recently that perhaps... Um, you know, some of the reason why I haven't been given a lot of grace, at least that I feel like I see people getting away with crap that I just have the book thrown at me. I mean, like, how the hell do they get away with like, if that, if I did that, <laughs> I have the book thrown at me. Okay. Like I have, anyway, don't get me started, but I realize, okay, it might have something to do with the fact that I'm a life path nine, which is supposedly somebody who is this this is their last rodeo they're here to answer a karma like i'm here to tie up loose karma answer to any of that um to finish it up so you know that might be why um i don't feel like i i you know i feel like life has maybe been a little bit more brutal than me and i don't say this to woe is me i say this to actually encourage you that as bad as this story is that i'm about to tell you um hopefully it won't be that bad right because hopefully you don't have these malefics opposing each other in your money houses and you don't have a life path nine <laughs> telling you, you got to answer to everything. Okay. Um, and why are money houses so important when we talk about 10th house? Uh, you know, it ties into money, right? Even though 10th house is not considered a money house, well, it is about generational wealth. And so it, it is in, in, in an indirect way related to these money houses. Uh, sixth house as well as your vocation, right? Your day-to-day -day work, which side note, south node was in my sixth house during that time. So I've got the squeeze on my 10th house of career and the south node purging out my anything job related. It, 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 it was a really great time. It was grand. Yes, I'm being sarcastic. So um, hopefully your karma in this life, which you're going to be seeing in your, you know, natal Saturn placement, uh, hopefully your karma is not so material and financial like mine. And also if you're younger, your accumulated karma, your baggage that you're carrying at this point is far less, which, you know, I'll share with you how, despite those natal placements, um, from 17 to 19 years old, it wasn't quite the shit show that I experienced in my late forties. Okay. So coming into this transit, like I said, I was going through, um, the nodes in my 12th and 6th houses, which I've already put out a video about that. If you want to watch it, you can. But essentially, uh, I was being twilight zoned. Okay, I was at a point of surrender in my life and, you know, trying to just get a job to fix the squeeze that was on my career and my business and my status was not going to really work, okay? And with Black Moon Lilith also transiting my fourth house, this opposing house at that time, which I also put another video out about that as well, uh, if you wanna watch it, my family is very much factoring into um, not taking kindly to the pressure that was being applied to um, generational wealth, my career and all of that. So um, then with the malefics in my natal money houses, second and eighth, um, getting triggered, it, it's, and, and, you know, Chiron at this point is in my 11th house, um, which would be giving me, this would be, you know, and Neptune is there as well, by the way, everywhere I look, like, do I, can, where can I go to help with the squeeze that's on this 10th house? Can I go get a job? No, your south node's there. Well, how about, can I go to family? Uh, no, they're pissed off at you. Uh, <laughs> and you got to avoid natal fourth house. So you never had any real support or belonging. You got nothing. You got no foundation. Okay, keep it moving. Well, what about your personal income? No, you've had, you know, Saturn in, in there your entire life. You've had problems uh, getting paid fairly. You've had, um, well, how about, how about shared resources with spouse, with inheritance? No, they've stolen from you. <laughs> no, they owe you money. Uh, no, you have a court order that's not being enforced. Okay. All right. Let's keep it moving. What about friends? What about friends? No, you got Chiron in there and um, Neptune where, you know, you got a lot of nice wishful thinking, but um, not a lot of substance and it is really hurting. 
Like, you know a lot of people, but none of these people are actually showing up in a really tangible way. I learned something very important with this Saturn transit that went through my 10th house. You know, while you're focused on the squeeze over here, be aware of that opposing house, okay? That opposing fourth house of your private life, your home, your family, they're feeling that squeeze. And I'm going to tell you what, if that squeeze hits hard enough and your family isn't strong enough to endure the pressure. And so essentially what it boils down to is uh, there's, there's no support system to deal with this pressure, this squeeze that, that I showed you in that balloon, okay? And so what I learned from that time is that having a solid foundation, having a solid family is very important. That's when I started actually learning more about what's happened with the nuclear family, the breakdown of the nuclear family and uh, how this has been going on for generations and what it is doing to society when, you know, your career is not always right. We're told a career is so important. Well, you know, what happens if you overdevelop that career, but then something, your business burns down or you have an employee uh, steal from you, you know, or you, God forbid, have some type of terminal disease or illness or accident somebody, or somebody in the family, you fill in the blank. Life happens, right? And there's plenty of life that can happen in those other 11 houses, right? You need to have a balanced life. You cannot make your whole life about being a good employee or even a good investor or a good career corporate climber, okay? And this is when I started really understanding the importance of that opposing house and it being strengthened to support these Saturn transits as they are being made. And if you're like me and you have a weak fourth house, where else can you go to strengthen it? Okay, so let's talk about comparing and contra contrasting the two transits I've had of Saturn going through my 10th house. The first one, the first one, it was back in 1992 through 94, 29 years ago when I was ages 17 through 19 years old. And, um, I think back to that time and, and it makes me realize how much age was on my side at that time in life and I took a lot for granted. I was also going through a nodal return which we all pretty much do at about age 18. So that's a time in your life generally astrologically when things are lining up for people they tend to uh, be a little bit more smooth flowing because your, your nodes are lining up to the point where they were uh, at your time of birth. Okay, so. That time was a lot more smooth and very different from the second time. Um, back then, I, I was in college. Um, I had a full-time job. I was going to school full-time. I, I mean, my life was full of responsibilities. And 10th house is all about responsibility and work, putting the work in. And so, you know, I think maybe during that entire transit, maybe for three to six months total, I was out of work, but that was because I moved from Houston to Austin and I was having to get resituated in the move, like get into a new school, get a new job, get settled and all of that into doing, getting a new job, you know? So, but at that time I just, right, the economy was so different and with age on my side, I, you know, and being single, no kids at that point, I had no trouble getting the help of, you know, other men. Like I, you know, I had no trouble getting a boyfriend or somebody who was like, you know, willing to like share bills with me or help me with housing or help me with bills, uh, but not the case anymore, right? Even in 2022, even in the 2020s, at that age right now, I mean, people are still struggling because of the economy, how much things have changed since then in 30 years, right? You have a lot of people at that age nowadays can't even afford to leave their parents' homes. So very different, but then, you know, you fast forward to now, as a single mom or just coming out of single parenting for eight years, you know, and I'm in my forties. Um, it's not only a different economy, but you just don't have age working for you in your career and 
in terms of partnering and improving your status, like marital status, right? Um, that's not quite working like it used to. And so, yeah, during that time, there was some family conflict with my parents. I will say that, um, you know, obviously the second and eighth houses were getting triggered. It was bringing up that, that karma that I was born into. And, you know, yeah, there was conflict with my dad at that time where he was dipping out yet again about helping me with college expenses, but I managed. I, you know, didn't have a lot of luxuries, but I lived comfortably. And now I actually look back at that time and contrast it to now. And I'm like, my God, you know, it was so much easier as hard as I thought it was, even though he was arguing with me about money and dipping out and excusing and blaming and blah, 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 you know, I lived pretty comfortably. I mean, I wasn't living luxuriously, but, um, and yes, I did work hard. I was working full time and going to school full time. I did get burned out from that time period. Uh, 10th house could be a time where you take on a lot of added responsibilities and you have to be cautious about burning yourself out. Um, I was often short on sleep because of maintaining this schedule. Um, but I did live pretty well compared to this last transit. Um, which I'll talk about shortly. Uh, but let me just say, you know, looking back over the last 29 years and what's happened in my life since then over that 29 year cycle, um, that journey of, well, where am I now with my life's work, with my efforts to build status in this life and trying to leave a legacy for my family? What did I accomplish? Um, you know, I have done a bit of a check-in with myself, like, is this what I wanted to do with my life when I became an adult and Saturn first went through this house and I was working my butt off, you know, um, burning myself out, you know? Um, yeah, I did accomplish some pretty notable thing. I got to give myself credit for that. <laughs> I, I raised a family of three daughters. I'm very proud of them, even though they have tried me. They have tried me. Oh, yes. Uh, we got work to do. Um, and I did graduate from college um, with honors and with an award for my writing and I gained certifications after that several and I got a lot of recommendations. I mean, if you look at my LinkedIn profile, you know, you would think I'm making six figures a year. I'm not. Oh, I am not. <laughs> I wrote um, two books. Uh, I built an online business with over 27,000 followers and I sold digital property on various online platform. So I don't say all of that to brag because trust me, there's going to be some humility that I will be sharing with you very shortly. <laughs> okay. So I accomplished all that stuff, all that worldly stuff. And what does it amount to at the end of the day? Not a damn thing. Anyway, no, it, okay. There's some good things. I'm, you know, but I will say maybe I'm being hard on myself. Okay. I accomplished a lot. Did it give me everything I hoped it would give me? No. Black Moon Lilith in the 10th house. <laughs> okay. The lessons that I learned from this last 29-year cycle, right, with this Saturn coming full circle yet again into my 10th house, is that hard work does not always pay. Cheap labor is what gets hired. And the days of loyalty that my parents, the boomers had, well, we knew whenever I was growing up, Gen X, we knew that it was, those days were gone, but at least we still had some belief in meritocracy. It's now 2024. There's no belief in that anymore. I don't have any belief anymore that if you work hard or that the most, you know, that you're going to get rewarded or that the most qualified candidate is going to get hired or none of that. I don't believe in any of this anymore. And I've come to learn that everybody's got an agenda. And if you're not furthering it, you're not going to be furthered, right? We know this from what we're seeing in the news about DEI hires. Didn't earn it. You know, that's, that's what DEI is now getting known for. Didn't earn it. But they get the job. They get the hired. They get hired. They get promoted. Um, they get reach on social media. And... I also learned that most people in this world are chasing dollars and they're not living their life's purpose. They're doing what pays the bills. And if you try to live your life's purpose, then you're going to be swimming against the current. It's going to be very difficult for you in this reality because this construct 
is mostly based upon putting money above morals and keeping up appearances and that's the norm in this matrix this reality right like take for example what happened in 2020 when we had jobs in exchange for jabs so another thing i learned is that that ageism is quite real now that i'm in my late 40s having gone through this i figured out okay uh, this is a real deal employers actually prefer younger workers over experienced workers which was a shocker because i remember again going back to this first transit in my early adulthood I honestly would look at people my age back then and think, oh, they're getting paid really well because, see, they have all this experience and they've got all these references and they've had time to really build their career and their connections and that's how they're able to afford, you know, these, these nice houses and these cars and this lifestyle, this middle class lifestyle. So one day I'll be able to do that too, right? Wrong. Um, I started learning that actually, um, employers prefer younger because they're, they're more energetic, they're more healthy. They tend to be, even though I like to, you know, be healthy myself, um, you will get younger kids who are given opportunities because they're going to be more grateful for it. Translation, they will put up with abuse to at least say, well, I, I have that on my resume. I work for that company or whatever. They're also more naive, which means they're easier to train and shape and mold the way that the employer likes. And I learned from all of this, especially as I'm seeing the development of AI and automation taking over people's jobs and, you know, all the advances going on with that, I start realizing the dirty truth is that, you know, this is happening because what employers want is cheap slaves. I mean, that's what they want. They want to own you for under $20 an hour, okay? And they don't want to worry about you going home and having political opinions that might mess up their business or whatever. Like, they just want a good slave, right? And, and, and they don't want to have to worry about paying your adult bills, especially in this economy. And so the ease of finding work in my 20s and even my 30s just completely gone, shot out the window. By the way, I try to explain this to my kids. They don't get it. I mean, they know, they know that we're having inflation and stuff like that, okay? Uh, but they don't know how bad it is because I don't know if they ever knew how good it was back in the early 90s, right? When I went through that first Saturn transit in my 10th house and you know what I've taken away from this experience over the last 29 years is imparting to them some wisdom which is hopefully 10th house Capricornian right Saturn of work smarter not harder okay um as an Aquarian I was not very impressed with the conventional wisdom that didn't really pay off for me of go to school, get a good job. Is that, does, do those even exist anymore, right? Um, I, I've taught my kids, you know, not only be prepare for ageism, it's real, but also that this whole go to school, get a good job, this is a scam, right? We're coming into student loan debt. This is a big topic, a big conversation going on right now in the media about student loan debt because why people went to school for what turns out and got into debt over what turns out to be junk education. So I've been actually telling my kids to go back even to more, more age old wisdom, which is like, I told my kids, you know what my grandparents did with a, just a high school diploma is they built a house they got property right out of high school and with a with a shed that was like basically the equivalent of what we would call a tiny house today they started their home that they added on to through the years as children were born as they increased in property and you know taking on things of tangible value rent houses 
oil drilling property, cattle ranching, gardening, basically what we would call homesteading today. That's how my grandparents, depression babies, pulled themselves out of nothing. Side note, they were also Chiron and Aries generation. That's how they pulled themselves out of the dirt, out of nothing. They became owners, landowners of tangible value. They didn't go through this idea of, I got to get into debt so I can pay my debt so I can mindlessness, right? That doesn't actually make any sense anymore if it ever did. I'm going to also say, you know, during this 29 year transit, I saw jobs going to people from third world countries. Um, and, and that was suppressing the wages of citizens here in the United States. I saw people breaking laws, getting away with it. We're seeing that right now. People coming in, invading this country, and they're just being given all kinds of freebies as we have so many Americans suffering right now. And, and you know, so many younger generations dealing with student loan debt that's increased, and then the cost of living increase has increased. And the outcome is that we've lost the American dream. And you have even young people now saying, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to afford a home because of the, the housing crisis and the homelessness that's going on right now um, with no end in sight. So this idea that you could be whoever you want to be when you grow up, if you would just work hard and be honest, I mean, that's been, that's been lost. I think people are starting to wake up to a lot of the lies that we were told, a lot of the programming, the conditioning, and definitely when you're talking about Saturn, 10th house, Capricorn, we're looking at conditioning, okay? We're looking at status quo, and that's something I'm witnessing is, like, there's stuff going on generationally uh, between the boomers and the younger generations um, where... You know, the younger generations are saying, hey, this is not adding up anymore. So that's not making any sense. Uh, this is not working. And the boomers are like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, it always worked for me. Um, what are you complaining about? You're just entitled, you know. And I don't know that they're entirely understanding how much harder people have to work. And they're, oh, well, you just need all those fancy things. Well, all those fancy things are required <laughs> now to get a job that you could just get from walking in and filling out an application in person, you know. So um, I think there's... A breakdown uh, we're having to re-understand uh, what exactly is a fair investment in education and what would be a fair exchange for that education and experience but we're living in a reality where you know there's cognitive dissonance as far as I can tell because um, well that's that's listen they're waking up okay because now they're starting to get their retirement and their social security hit. And I think they're starting to wake up, especially with the inflation eating into their social security. And they're seeing illegals getting more monthly benefits than these boomers are who are retired. Um, and and this, is, these are, this is a generation who worked their entire lives in the system. And it worked for them. By and large, it worked for them. Um, and they paid into the system. But the gig is up. I don't know that it's paying for much anymore. And furthermore, uh, these boomers are having to sit back and watch illegals get more money a month than, the, than, than they're getting from their social security after, after having paid into the system their entire life. And these people haven't put a day of work into it. It's shocking, it's stunning. Okay, so during this last transit, um, it started in 2021, and as we all know what was going on in 2021, we were coming fresh into, like, um, we had been fresh out of lock, lockdowns and mandates and all of that. And I had previously, in years prior, built up my YouTube channel where I had over 27,000 followers um, for four years, you know. And then suddenly, after COVID, um, my views were absolutely decimated by an algorithm, and it had me wondering, were those... 27,000 subscribers ever real. Um, I started looking at appearances of things versus substance, which is very 10th house, you know, looking beyond the veneer of something into what, what actually holds water and what actually endures and perseveres because, you know, I did all this work, four years of work and all these followers. And then when you can't hardly get any eyeballs on your work because of an algorithm, what you start wondering, well, what, wait a minute, what was the use of that work 
four years of work just flushed down the damn toilet. So um, when I came into that transit, I was in a nodal inverse, which means that basically the nodes were directly opposite of the way the nodes are in my natal chart. So um, I started looking at uh, trying to develop my offline business more. I got more into doing pop-up markets, public venues, um, and building on other platforms as well. But I just had limited success with that. And so I even built like over on TikTok to try to get more reach, which I did have some improvement with all of those different things, but it was very limited. It was the drop in the bucket here and there. And um, some of them like Instagram, like absolutely nothing. The only reason I post on Instagram because it's, it's easy. It's like, okay, why not? <laughs> and when I was trying to do pop-up markets, my daughter was like, listen, if you want to get into th these groups, you've got to be on Instagram. Like, okay, fine. I did. But has, I, has it benefited me? Have I ever gotten ever a client from Instagram? No, no. <laughs> not in the last three years. I've not once gotten a client from Instagram. Um, but anyway, when I want to say this, be very mindful if you are a 10th houser of when Saturn is conjunct your natal sun, because that was a time when, and I knew this as an astrologer, but I had to be a hard head. So Capricornian, I have to keep working, right? Um, I worked that week, that time, it was actually like probably about three days when it was exact to the degree. And I knew as a student of astrology, don't work, take that off. But a hard, I was being a hard head, Mars in Capricorn, the eighth house, and I had to just keep hammering. So I went and tried to do um, a pop-up market whenever that conjunction was exact. And I got zero sales that day. And I nearly had what I felt like I almost had a heat stroke. And I basically lost money putting, the, putting up the vendor fees to do that. And then nobody, nobody, which had never before happened. And my daughter was there doing a pop-up market as well. And she's like, they can feel your energy. They can feel your heaviness. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they can feel Saturn on you. This is what she was, she's a Pisces. This is what she was telling me. So, and you know, during this time, people try to help and give me advice, you know, like one of them was, okay, well just build, build your business offline more. Okay, good, cool. I did that. And then when that didn't work, well, you, what you need to do is you need to add more products and, and less services. Okay. I brought in sage bundles. I brought in, um, eucalyptus shower bundles. I did, I brought in sage spray. I mean, I did all, I have my books there, like, you know, pfft, nothing. Okay. Um, that those were not selling. Okay. So it was a big sit your ass down from the universe. Okay. Uh, very humbling because when we're talking 10th house, it's very public. Everybody can see it. And, um, and Saturn is about, you know, reduction, right? A status 10th house. And so long story short, despite all my fighting and flailing, um, by the second half of this transit, I was effectively homeless. Yes. Um, all my storage, even to this day, are locked up in a storage facility um, because during this time, you know, my north node was, it, it went into, after it got out of inverse, it went into um, my 12th house. So uh, it was just a point of surrender. And again, like I said, the issues going on with my fourth house, um, not helpful, not supportive. And uh, I actually somewhat saw this coming I was hoping that I was going to weather it better you know prior to Saturn moving into this 10th house I'm going to talk to y'all toward the end about what you could do to prepare for this okay I did prepare um it wasn't enough okay and I think that it wasn't enough because I underestimated the impact to my fourth house and the relevance of my fourth house. And hopefully you don't have as weak of a fourth house, okay? Um, but yeah, during this entire time, people were like, get a job. But like I said, with the South Node in my sixth house, um, not gonna happen. Put out thousands of resumes, no job. And I'm learning now that there's a bunch of ghost jobs out there, right? Like I've been following people and uh, different 
communication boards like what's going on why do we keep seeing the same job listings they keep rerunning it and people never get hired and i found out oh they're doing that because from covid they had a ppp loan program where these corporations these companies will get loans from the government to promise to look for new hires okay so they'll run ads saying that they're hiring they might even do interviews which turn out to be ghost interviews they go nowhere and you wonder why on earth would somebody do that because here's the thing they get money for doing that but the loophole is they never have to actually hire anybody they just pretend they're hiring <laughs> so a lot of people get their time wasted and again Chiron and Aries, if you got self-worth issues and you don't, you can't see the bigger picture and you don't know what the hell's going on here, you will think nobody values me. I'm worthless. I'm a piece of shit. I'm not good enough. I'm a whatever. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's what was going on during that time when I can't get work in that kind of employment environment, you know, um, the only thing I did get offered was basically a freelance gig and those people tried to screw me out of money like they didn't even pay me and they tried to get me to do two jobs without paying me for the first one so I had to exit out of that so um, I realized you know during that whole time as I shared with you in my previous videos about that north node transit like I wasn't supposed to be working like I kept trying to work uh, but I kept hitting brick walls and um, and it just wouldn't come together. Like I even tried to reach out to other readers online and other content creators online, uh, but I kept dealing with this pattern of being ignored, right? Like, so if you're a content creator, one way to get more reach is to collaborate, you know, collab with another um, content creator. Um, but hell, if I just even said something nice or try to be generous, I mean, forget me trying to ask to do a collab. I wasn't even asking anything. I'm just trying to be nice. I would get ignored and um you know initially it started out where um i was kind of trying to encourage others because it was something that i was lacking within myself you know and i just based on my own spiritual beliefs you know you if you want to reap something you need to sow it and so i was short on encouragement words of affirmation so i was sowing that to other people but this weird thing happened where I kept getting ignored, ignored, ignored. And um, and then I started, and I never did it to get a reaction or anything, but after it happens over and over and over again, we're talking like a two and a half year time frame where you see this pattern where people just keep ignoring you and you start thinking, oh God, they don't like me. Or, oh, I guess, I guess they don't, they're questioning me you know <laughs> like they suspect me or that right if you're nice to people they wonder like okay well I don't know what's happened in this world but that's where we're at um so anyway I, during this time of dealing dealing with these experiences I realized okay you know I need to just kind of keep working and doing my thing um it's kind of one of those dance like nobody's watching moments and that's really what I did I just kept going persevering which is Saturn 10th house you know and yeah, sometimes you, you have to just encourage yourself because other people, they're not going to do it. They can't even do it for themselves. And I absolutely needed it because Saturn in the 10th house was definitely a time of me questioning my own life purpose. And I was going through the astrology, like, wh where am I getting it wrong? What am I doing wrong? Because uh, I'm not getting my carrot, right? I've done everything to get the carrot stick and I'm not getting doggone carrot. So what am I doing wrong here? It must be my fault. Chiron and Aries, right? I'm not good enough. Um, but the more I looked at my chart, I'm like, no, I actually am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So why am I not getting rewarded conditioning, right? Um, okay, I'm not going to get recognized Saturn in the 10th house. People are not going to notice me. They're not going to, and you know, this is what it is. So you got to encourage yourself. Just keep working. Dance like nobody's watching, you know? So, um, toward the end of this transit, the second half of this transit, I end up moving to a different location where I am right now, actually moving back to a location I was trying to get out of. It's like, here I am again. Um, 
and so I knew people out here, um, which is sort of good. You would think like I have okay more of a support system out here. Um, and there is less competition out here, lower cost of living out here. So those are really positive things. But the downside is that there's less opportunities out here. And the opportunities that are out here, um, they're not not as good as what is available in Austin that in years past I would have been able to get. Um, but whatever, I just, you know, again, North better than 12th house, surrender, I give up, I, uncle, uncle, you know, I cry uncle. Um, so I did continue against, you know, what I know to be true with the astrology, continue to, you know, try to look for a job, but continue to get ignored. <laughs> and, um, I even knew somebody and I don't know why, but, um, after I filled out the application, I went on the interview, I was ignored again. Like it was weird. Um, and then I was offered one by somebody, but there was what I felt a conflict of interest and the pay was very low. So, um, I even try to do like gig work out here, but still, um, low or no opportunities out here. And so that didn't come together. And, um, then I try to just like connect with people about, well, Hey, let's do markets together because I have my pop-up tent still. And, but maybe we'll do farmer's market stuff. That's more down to earth, practical, you know? that people need, right? No, right? I mean, I'm paying attention to trends and I'm really like just trying, damn it, I'm trying to crack this code. I'm trying to break out of this, you know? And um, no, they're not interested. They don't care. They're doing their own thing. And it just doesn't come together for some reason. It's just always one blockage after another I can't seem to get out of. And recently an Aquarian viewer who's also been a client of mine, but she's older and she and I share a lot of uh, astrology. We have a lot of similar astrology. Uh, she told me, oh my, you know, when I, last time I went through Saturn in my 10th house, that was the last time I actually had a job. <laughs> I was like, oh crap, damn. Okay, uh, so what do I do with that? I don't know because these damn people want me to pay for everything, right? Y'all know how it is. Do I, do I stay at home? Do I just quit working? Do I roll over and play dead? Do I play, play possum? I mean, what do I do? Because this matrix doesn't really provide well for people not working, right? They're even talking about raising the retirement age. Like they don't want to give people their social security because they looted it. That's why. But huh, I digress. The thing is, they don't, they want you to work to your dying day. Okay. But at the rate I'm going, I'm like, listen, I'm 49 and you're telling me the last time. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about, um, again, what does Saturn reward? Because this is sounding pretty hopeless. Is it not? It is. It, I know it is. Um, a lot of astrologers will say that by the time you finish this transit, you will be rewarded by Saturn if you've put in the work and the effort. Well, holy shit, I put in the work and effort. I sure did. And I just found out that TikTok is getting banned. <laughs> After building over there, yes, I sure as heck did. Okay, so I don't know where we go. I mean, and again, you gotta. Where did you sow? Did you sow in a good ground? Okay. Um. And and then here's another thought. What is good ground in this matrix? Okay, because when you're not getting your little carrot stick or your cookie that you were on the hunt for, right? That you were conditioned. You did the work, but there's no carrot stick or cookie at the end of that trail. Um. What, what do you do? Because in this reality, success is I can pay my bills. But when I can't pay my bills, I guess I'm a loser. Not saying that's true, but there is a common mentality, okay, of that. So, you know, I will say that if there's not going to be any carrot or cookie, at the end of all of this work that I was conditioned to do, believing that there was going to be some payoff, but there is no payoff. Does that mean I'm a failure? I'm not a success. Um, maybe not. Maybe we're living in an upside world, you know, and I've come to entertain that idea. I did keep working through this entire time of challenge and adversity. Um, but I keep having to reduce my my workload and streamline it. I'm currently in the process of doing that yet again. Because I'm 
looking at the futility the futility of of putting work that could be vaporized like that with a TikTok van and I will say I've, it's like I've been through this before like I'm coming into this right now as Saturn is going in my 11th house where I feel like I'm back to reducing yet again whereas when it was in my 10th house what I was reducing was on YouTube and no matter how I try to streamline my work I'm not able to eke out a living that's not that's not right that's not equitable as the left is fond of saying I'm even starting to question after coming out of the 10th house Saturn and going into 11th house Saturn where there's some carryover because my career involves social media 11th house I'm starting to think well you know all the work that I did trying to like recalibrate reconfigure rework streamline be more efficient be more effective with the shorter snappier content right that was on trend uh that the algorithm was supporting i mean was it all for naught is resistance futile <laughs> so i'm going to tell you i mean the algorithms were telling me that i need to shorten my content they're punishing me when people click away so i made it shorter and then I had viewers come back and say, well, I don't really watch you anymore because you shortened your content. Really? Seriously? <laughs> and then I'm like, well, it doesn't matter anyway because, I mean, if y'all are not buying, like, why am I going to give each sign to, uh, an hour every month for free? I could be living under a bridge and, and if I can't pay my bills, it's my problem. But you want an hour each. I'm sorry if I sound like I'm bitching, but this is like the mentality that people just want their free stuff. Where's my free stuff? And they don't really care about the quality of life for the person offering all of this up. It's the Walmartization of, of, of society. Everybody's like a factory worker now in China. <laughs> so I don't have the answers. I'm still working this out. Saturn the 11th house issues. Some observations I made during this time, um, going back to the issue of recognition for your work, for your contribution. I watched other people getting recognized during this time. Um, people doing collabs, people um, honoring other people's work, things like that. And I started and, and some of these were people that had actually ignored me, but they were recognizing other people. And I, I started kind of like looking at myself again, Chiron, and everybody's like, well, why, why can't you even like acknowledge a nice comment that I made on your work? You know, like, you, why did you just ignore me? Like, what's, do you not like me or what's wrong? I don't know, maybe they didn't even see it, you know? But I started looking at why other people were getting, I mean, if there was a reason why they chose to acknowledge somebody over me or instead of me. And I started realizing that um, people are very status conscious. And, you know, I only have like 24,000 followers toward the end of this transit. Decimated, right? YouTube was decimating my followers, brought me down like 3,000 um, but even so, most of those people didn't, never even saw my content. Like, I'm lucky if I could get 100 views per video. And so they probably went over and looked at my work and they're like, eh, no clout, no status. Like, why? Um, they probably want to collaborate with people that are going to help them get reach for their work. And I wasn't getting reach on my work. So therefore, I'm not helping, I'm not going to be able to help them get reach on their work. Um, and... I started looking at myself, you know, um, I had, I've given money, I've donated, like I've seen certain content creators going through hard times and I've, I've given money to them. I've um, given them likes, given them views, given them encouraging comments. I even gave shout outs to various, you know, and again, I did not have an agenda in doing this, but 
um, was doing it more of a, because I know what it's like to not be acknowledged. It was part of me healing something within myself to give what I felt was missing out of my own life. Um, but Saturn in the 10th house is basically going to show you the weaknesses in your career or in your status or in your reputation. It's going to find faults. It's going to be a fault finder. And it could have you doing that within yourself, especially with Chiron there. I was doing a lot of quality assurance testing of myself, my business, what I was doing with my life. I just realized like, okay, so people want to be associated with those who have had clout and I didn't really have it. And also people who appear to be winning in life as even as false as that may be, because maybe they are winning because of algorithms, you know, um, artificial constructs being curated. Okay. Or maybe for bad reasons, because um, it's playing into this whole woke agenda, which is actually very nefarious. Okay. Um, so, and I also notice that again, the age thing was showing up of, okay, well, maybe they're recognizing other women who are younger. You know, that was again, me becoming painfully aware of my age yet again. So the conclusion that I came to is that I was not being viewed in a positive light, if at all. And I started understanding how status conscious and security minded a lot of people really are. And it's more than they let on. It seriously is. Um, I learned, especially during this time with, you know, the nodes in Scorpio and Taurus and Uranus and Taurus, a lot of financial change and instability out in the world. I realized how insecure so many people are and how it impacts relationships and opportunities because of the way people view you. Um, like they want to be involved with you when they perceive you don't need them. But if they perceive that you have a need, you know, it's like in this society, neediness is shamed and hidden, even though we all have needs. We're all social animals. We need each other. But because it's so repressed and hidden due to shame of needing things, um, people are letting their needs unconsciously uh, motivate them. And, and sometimes it's coming out through exploitation and a fear of loss of power. These dynamics, okay. By the way, it was during this time that I became aware of a book by Robert Greene titled The 48 Laws of Power. It's on audiobook. You, it's a really quick, uh, you could listen to it, uh, I think in 30 minutes here on YouTube. Um, my gosh, it's, whoo, my God, it's like the games people play, um, in order to have like power and status and, and, and you know what? It's ugly. Some people get angry and upset when they listen and he's, the guy is not saying this is what you do. He's saying, this is what people do to get power in this matrix. Okay. It's just some wild stuff, but I became aware of, I became a lot more mindful of, of this during this time. Also, during this time, I, um, I noticed people being successful with things that I had tried and failed at, and somehow they were more successful. What se it seemed like they applied far less effort, you know? It seemed like um, they dealt with far less adversity, and I would ask myself, you know, well, why did they get further along doing that than I did? How come I couldn't write comparisons, unhealthy comparisons, you know? Um, Saturn, 10th house, where do you measure up to other people, right? Um, it's a transpersonal house. Um, other people are being brought in to the thought process here. And so I started then again, looking back at, well, okay, so this person has a stronger support system. Like they either come from a, a more solid family where, you know, they, they had the support that they needed. Um, to launch this business, the family was backing them with resources, with words of affirmation, whatever, or they had they had good connections with friends who really got involved and put in on it, put some skin in on the game. They had a great network, you know, and I start realizing, okay, um, yeah, I mean, there's only so much I can do on my own, you know, um, or any one person, you, you have to have a good support system. I came to realize this. Um, 
and I started looking again at my family like well why do other people have families where the the children or the family members are not fighting over resources like this like I see in my family and I started noticing well um, people have uh, more material wealth and the downside is that it appears as though they have more harmony in their families but this is because nobody's going to confront anything or have the, the tough conversations or rock the boat because they don't want to get written out of a will or something <laughs> so again it's just like well pick your poison I mean this family over here their kids don't challenge them like yours do but they have uh, less authenticity in those relationships. I realize the role that other people play in your own individual success in life. It's not that other people are solely responsible, but it, it does impact significantly your success in life. It, people can help promote your work. They can help you endure setbacks without derailment. This was a big issue for me during this time of uh, dealing with my own feeling of irrelevance or insignificance. I mean, I will say at the worst moment during this transit, and this is going to sound uh, so dramatic, but it's because of the other energies just adding layers on here. I felt like if I died, it would maybe be probably two weeks before anybody caught on. Like before anybody noticed if I actually like died. Like I could be dead for two weeks before anybody would even notice. And that was incredibly painful for me. Like I, I won't go into the depths of explaining that. Just trust me when that finally clicked on in my head, that was brutal, absolutely brutal. To just understand like the other utter meaninglessness that I felt that was super dark that was a super dark time and I think that what added to the pain is that as I was watching other people succeed and achieve things that you know I had worked so hard for to no avail as far as I could tell um, I had people tell me things like well, you have a poverty mentality. That's why. Um, or you have a lack consciousness. That's your problem is that, you know, you're lack conscious. Um, and I had other people just kind of generally have this attitude like, well, I'm doing fine. I mean, I don't know what your problem is. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I can go out there and get a job or do with this or do with that. Like, I don't know what your problem is. Um, my life experience with malefics in my natal money houses, I would never talk to somebody like this. I, uh, I, would I would never talk to anybody like this. And knowing what I know about what's going on with humanity right now, the economy, global politics, all of that, and having lived this long and seen easier, better days, I know it's not that simple. Scarcity is manufactured, and you better believe it's happening right now. Because life isn't supposed to be this hard, okay? I just, I don't believe it's supposed to be this hard, but I do think that we're in a battle, and I think a lot of us born right now are here for this battle, so that coming generations do not have to go through this, okay? Life is not supposed to be this hard. And I will say, yeah, there was a lot of soul searching that I did with the North Node in my 12th house, a lot of shadow work that I had to do during this time with Blackman Lilith, my natal Black Moon Lilith in the 10th, being opposed by Black Moon Lilith in my 4th, sweet Jesus. So I finally was brought to a point of understanding and accepting that my life is not going to look like others. The white picket fence that I had been striving for over the last 29 years, since the last transit, the American dream conditioning that I had been sold, um, it had become a nightmare. And was mostly achieved by people who largely sell their lives by the hour to the system. They conform. They are conditioned. They're the people who are going to, you know, get a job for a job. All right. 
And I'm not one of those people with Uranus, my natal Uranus in the sixth house. I'm not one of those people. And I started, you know, questioning myself, especially there were some times when I kept driving through this particular area where there were a lot of new houses being built. And I'd stare at all these houses upon houses upon houses, beautiful new homes. I'd be like, wow, well, why can't I afford that? You know, <laughs> how can they, all these people get these new houses? I can't get a house, you know, like why? And I started understanding, okay, you know, that um, these are the normies and they play by the rules and I don't. And I'm not one of those people. And um, I try, you know, but it never quite works with that Black Moon Lilith placement. I don't end up dealing with jealousy or competition in the workplace, usually from other females, not always. Um, but I had two astrologers, you know, tell me, you know, you're not supposed to be working for other people. And until you figure this out, you're going to continue having trouble um, holding down a job without losing your mind. And I even had... You know, one astrologer say, I don't even know how you would work in a corporate environment. I mean, and I can. I, my Mars and Capricorn can totally do it. My Taurus rising totally do it. But they say, you know, um, I just don't even know how you could live that corporate life without losing your mind. You're not supposed to be doing that with your life. And so I'm like, okay, so this is the price I pay for not conforming to the conditioning and living my life purpose. But trust me, you know, when you're not getting paid well for your life purpose and you feel like you're getting, you're not getting rewarded, you feel like you're getting punished, uh, you start questioning yourself. And I, I definitely did. I started saying, okay, am I, am I doing this for attention? Why am I doing this? Am I doing it for attention? Um, what if my work never pays off? What if people don't value my contribution? Um, tough questions, you know? And I started actually thinking of people who did not get recognized for their work until long after they died. You know, I'm like, God, you know, could that be me if ever, if ever, you know? And then realizing with this Chiron return, you know, doing a lot of healing on that, which I'll talk more about when I come out of it. It's not going to be until 2027. I'll talk about that. But um, I start becoming aware in healing this Chiron return, you know, it's not about me. Like, it's very personal. It is very much hitting me on a personal level. But um, people not appreciate or valuing my contribution at this point in time because of the condition of humanity is not entirely my my pro my fault, right? It's my problem, but it's not my fault. And so I'm learning to not personalize the losses so much. I'm not entirely there. But um, especially as I'm learning more about abuse of power within the government and these social media platforms and them trying to like de-boost people or blacklist or de-platform or demonetize or whatever i look at the it's and it comes out more and more proof comes out every day that, that we're in an economic war where things like this are going on of you know unfairness and injustice that's affecting so many people right like with this tiktok ban that's now coming up there's so many people that are making a living off of being content creators on tiktok i'm not one of them because i'm not monetized but um, you know, those people are going to lose their incomes and I'm actually following somebody right now. Side note, he's looking at maybe getting into a class action lawsuit to sue these companies for the loss of income. So anyway, the point is, is that I'm just becoming a lot more mindful about the bigger picture and learning to personalize it less and also learning to redefine what success is, um, because that's really been challenged. The world's way of translating success is that you have material achievement so that means you're a success right or you have money so then you have power and then you know if you don't well then you're not a success or loser right we talked about that so this is a conditioning that i'm having to kind of be i've been confronted with i've been taking a task over and i'm having to like throw it off um and in doing so i'm realizing how incredibly behavior modified so many of us are like, seriously, why do you get up in the morning? Because you're afraid. You're going after that little cookie or the carrot stick. But if it didn't pay you to go to that job or whatever, fill in the blank, would you do it? What would you do if money didn't matter? I guess is what I'm saying. And so, um, as a result, a lot of people's life purpose destiny has been derailed. They're not living it. If you don't live your life's purpose in this matrix, you get rewarded with money, it seems. But if you live your life's purpose in this matrix, you get punished. 
And I know a lot of us were taught, you could be whoever you want to be. No, wrong. <laughs> 50 years on this rock, no. <laughs> okay? Otherwise, you could just live off of love, right? And we know that doesn't work. Um, but, um, yeah, here's a, here's a thought. Uh, you know, I'm all about self-responsibility, especially with the North Node and Aries right now, okay? But we are dealing with economic and financial warfare, and maybe... Maybe you are the victim of some of that. I've, I really have my mind open up to it. And having to realize also that doing your life's work, um, whether people appreciate it or not, is taking this 3D versus 5D perspective. Like if everybody likes you, maybe you're doing something wrong. Just a thought. Totally counter culture, totally counter the conditioning. I mean, look, look at what's coming out right now with Diddy, with Epstein. And we're finding out a lot of these people that are successful in politics or in Hollywood, entertainment, sports, media, they're all owned. They're all owned. Like you're not going to get to that level of power in this matrix if they can't own you. Your, your voice, your actions. And so the real power actually in this matrix is owning yourself. And the price you have to pay for owning yourself is kind of like Neo on the Nebuchadnezzar. Right? It's not glamorous. It's not glamorous. So I, I come out of this like, well, I'm going to do my life's work regardless. This matrix may not currently support or reward my work. I may have to rework it a bit, fine tune it. I may have to do something supplemental in the 3D more to, to be more practical while still doing my spiritual work. Uh, I'm going to have to maybe reconfigure things a bit. But the reality is that at this time, this matrix may actually be at war with my work. But I'm going to keep doing what I'm here to do, regardless. And yeah, even though I'm in a battle, or I feel like I've been in a battle, yeah, maybe my family doesn't understand it, they didn't sign up for that, and I'm going to have to learn how to accept my own limitations and, and work within them without losing myself. And I'm going to have to be compassionate with myself and, and yeah, maybe learn through losing. And that's how many of us actually learn in this matrix. We learn by making mistakes and things not going our way. We learn. But maybe that's, maybe the higher value is coming out of this wiser advice if you are going through Saturn in the 10th house. Ideally, if you're almost about to go through Saturn in your 10th house, right? Saturn would be in your 9th house and hopefully you're preparing for it to go in your 10th house, <laughs> which I did. I did. All right. Um, and during that time, I prepared. Um, unfortunately, Everything I did to prepare for this transit, which was stockpiling, I had crypto, I had precious metals, I had um, one stock. Um, it was pretty much all liquidated, depleted from this transit, shockingly, stunningly. My stockpile was completely blown through, and nowadays I just like, I'll shop at Dollar 25 store, <laughs> Dollar Tree. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm doing, okay? other line of advice I would give is to be brutally honest with yourself about your 3D material weaknesses and limitations and try to strengthen them ideally before Saturn goes into this house. Try to be more practical. When Saturn was in my ninth house, it was raining money from stimulus checks unemployment, things like that, okay? And so, and Jupiter may be in your 10th house, probably in your 10th house during that time, giving you expansion with your career. But once Saturn gets out of that ninth house, the expansion, the benefic, right? It's, it's uh, not going to be happening with your status, okay, with money. At least it wasn't for me. And you're going to have, you're going to be tested on your level of endurance and practicality. And I mean, I wish, 
I did my best, but like I said, my best wasn't good enough. Um, and that's where family comes in and friends come into play to help you with that. So make sure that you have a strong fourth house and strengthen that as well, because that's your foundation in life. When all else fails, fourth house is what you can stand upon. And if you can't, if you don't have a strong fourth house to stand upon, sweet Jesus, you got to work on it. Because if you don't do that before this transit, you will definitely be shown the weaknesses in your foundation. If you have prioritized your career over family, you're going to probably be tested on this as well. If your relationships are transactional, that's probably going to come out. And the degree to which your relationships are based on money, resources, status, that's going to get tested. Well, I've said a lot, and I do appreciate those of you who have joined me all the way to the end. I hope I've said something here that has given you some insight into strengthening your foundation and your legacy. Till next time, be blessed.